Okay, cool. All right, well, thank you for everyone for coming. Um, I was going to present this at La Tour de Hack uh, at NSAC on Saturday, but uh, given the reasons that we all find ourselves sitting at home, um, I decided, well, why, why don't I just try to present it um, virtually? And hopefully, I mean, timing wise might help people um, more so now that people are stuck at home. Um, so, yeah, I, I just thought I'd cover what I what I've gone through and the different things that I've done. All right. So just a little about about myself. Um, I'm no uh, professional hacker or anything. Um, I'm just me. Uh, I don't consider myself all that wonderful on that. Um, certainly not on the level of zero cool. Uh, I do security stuff and there's my Twitter handle and I have my own blog post. All right, so for me, why I want to do a, a home lab is several reasons. One, you have greater control. Um, so it's equipment in your house under your control. Um, it also allows you to do kind of what you want. Um, you don't have to worry about, or oh, is this going to break the law or something? Because it's your stuff. You do things to your stuff. Now, obviously, they're, they're kind of um, ring fences around that. But by and large, it's it's your equipment, your boundaries. As long as you stay within that, you should be okay. And it's also cheaper. Um, uh, you'll see later on in the talk, uh, go on about things like cloud and that. But you can do it pretty cheap. I mean, you can obviously spend thousands on it, but you can also do it pretty cheaply um, and still get quite a lot of value out of it. And for me, this is probably one of the most important parts of it is I love filling with things. I love tweaking things. I love setting things up and gadgets and gizmos and all of that kind of thing. So for me, it's, it's one of the reasons why I do it because um, I just love doing that kind of stuff. So some things you probably need when you're doing this. Um, first is a, a broadband. Um, this obviously, or to do things like download packages, software. Um, you might even want to do searches on how to do things. Um, or maybe you need to use online services sometimes. So broadband's obviously a must. Uh, next is machines specifically for servers. So I kind of have different servers running in my home uh, lab. Uh, I have machines that actually provide services. Um, so I have things like my own DNS. Uh, I've got even things like a media server. Um, so things that actually provide functionality. And that can be for entertainment or actually part of the um, security research and that. So I've also got things like NAS. Um, so that helps me to store things and, and even um, uh, different things like, I don't know, password and word lists and that, that you can share across different systems. Uh, testing. So this is obviously very much part of security research. You want to tinker things, you want to play around with things, you want to test some things, you might even find a service that you want to test. Um, so the ability to spin up a server and being able to either install a service on there or even um, put the full uh, OS or whatever you maybe perhaps testing, put on there. And then the other one is training. Um, so there are things like uh, Pentester Labs. They actually provide you with different ISOs. Um, and a little bit on, there's some really great ISOs out there uh, or ways that you can leverage those ISOs and VMs to just make it really easy to, to do. Um, as well as obviously, the, as I mentioned, kind of linked to the other one before, uh, tinkering with things, testing things out. Um, the other thing you're gonna need is a laptop. Now, this is probably where I spend a bit more money, get something decent, get something that's gonna last you a while. Um, it's something that you perhaps can run a few VMs on. So you're not just, isolated to your home network all the time you might want to go out to some conferences and then quickly spin up a vm and test things out and that so having a decent laptop um, and spending a little bit more money on it will, will go a long way and provide you hopefully with a few years of service 
So I've kind of touched on this. Um, for me, you could have several boxes all around the house. I do, and my other half gets annoyed with me. Um, but a way around this is have virtualization um, and get a beefier server and then set up a virtualization platform, which I'll cover in a bit. Um, that can help you. Um, and that just makes things easier to manage, less things lying around the house and all of that. Um, and as I said, you're probably gonna get more bang for your buck. Um, spend a little bit more on a beefier server and you can have 10 servers versus trying to spend a little bit less and buy 10 individual servers. It's also a lot more flexible. So you can spin up the ends, kill them, snapshot them, all of that. That's not possible with a physical server unless you like, take disks out and replace disks and all of that, as you can imagine. It will, it will be absolute nightmare. Yeah. So provides you that ability. Um, snapshots are really important as well, uh, especially if you're gonna tinker around with things. I've done so many times where I didn't take snapshots and I had to reinstall and reinstall. Whereas if you just take a snapshot, you just right click, restore snapshot, and you add a specific point in time. So it's really good for tweaking and fiddling around with things, especially if you're worried that you might break something. As well as a backup. I mean, sometimes updates go wrong um, and they can break things. So having that kind of peace of mind also really helps. So it's all well, but how do you get this? Well, my first port of call is eBay. Um, I think most of my equipment, other than the network key stuff, but like all the servers and that, um, I've bought off eBay. Um, I think it's a really good place to buy. Now, I'll cover it in a bit, but you've got to be careful. But by and large, you, you can get some really great deals off there. So here's an example. Um, this is my primary server, my home server, called Anton. Um, Anton from Silicon Valley, which that's where I got the name from. And it cost me 90 bucks. I mean, 90 bucks for uh, something with 16 gig of RAM. Um, it was quite cool Xeons. Um, so, I mean, it's not a lot of money for, well, in my opinion, something that provides quite a bit of value. And with that, you can do quite a bit off the cuff already versus going out buying a new system you're not going to get that for 100 bucks um i don't know i can't remember if it actually came with a, um any uh hard drives so you might might have had to put in some hard drives but even still call it 150 bucks you are already on the way to um set up a few uh vms if you've got the right software but there are some things you need to check first check the specs uh this has bitten me a few times um where i didn't read uh, the specs assuming that it would just work and then i actually came to it and it didn't um, most recently i bought a bunch of hard drives i thought okay great i'll shove in a four terabyte hard drive and i'll shove a bunch of them and i'll be great yeah the server only supports two so things like that um before you buy things, just, just make sure you read the specs um, or even before you buy the, the, the server itself, just read the specs, make sure it's gonna do what you need it to do. Um, also read the description. Um, sometimes they just put nice wording just to sell it and then hidden away in the description you might find, or oh, uh, I don't know, the one fan makes a loud noise or something like that. Or this is for parts. Well, don't think that will work quiet on eBay, but some sort of thing that might make the server not as great as it can be. Um, this kind of goes to the first point, do your homework. So see, see what you can see in terms of upgrade, great ability. Um, can you add more memory? If you feel it's not quite enough, but also be careful. Um, it may seem like a bargain, but if you're spending say 100 pounds on a server with 16 gigs of ram and there's a server for 150 uh, pounds with 32 gigs you might be better spending a little bit more for going that server because trying to upgrade the memory will cost you more so just plan out what you want um, see what's available 
And the, the other point is be patient. Um, don't just dive in and try to get to the first server. Um, sometimes you might get lucky. I've had it before. I've got servers for like 30 bucks. Um, but other times you might get just sucked into the, the whole bidding war and spend more than you were probably willing to. So also set a bar, but also spend your time. There's often no rush to get something. So um, you might find a week later, you might get a server for a really good price. And the other thing is check the, the postage and shipping. Um, so sometimes this will bite you. So here's an example. Great, the server costs me 200, 200 bucks to buy it right now, but look at that shipping price, 70, 70 pounds shipping. So you're gonna almost do, uh, triple the, or add a half of what you're paying just for shipping. So it could be a, a significant overhead. And as I said, <laughs> be careful because sometimes there are people trying to charge it out there. I don't know how you can charge 150 bucks for a pretty outdated system. I don't know. Maybe there's a collector's item out there. I don't know. But um, I personally wouldn't pay this for that. Uh, I've seen other things out there um, that the extortion of prices. <laughs> and this one... <laughs> I've done first hand. So one of the very first servers I bought, it's like, great, buy it, uh, Blade server. This is going to be fantastic. I'm going to plug it in. It's going to be amazing. As soon as I turn it on, it sounded like an aircraft carrier, uh, jet engine taking off. Um, so do a bit of research. Um, be careful because sometimes these servers can be very loud or generate a lot of heat or suck a lot of power. So just do general Googles, uh, look on forums and that kind of thing. Um, and if you're okay with that, you might find, okay, well, I'll just, I've got a garage or something. I'll just whack it in there. And that's what I actually did with that server because it was loud. And uh, upgrades. So again, this kind of goes back to my first point, like plan ahead, uh, see what you want to do. Um, but also remember you can upgrade and don't just jump all in. Be 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 comfortable with just doing bit by bit, maybe month by month or every two months or, or whatever. Uh, that server I originally built, I built it up probably over a, a year and a half um, to where it is now. So there's, there's no rush to just suddenly throw all the hardware at it. I mean, if that's what you want to do, then go for it, but also um, take your time. And ag again, eBay's, a really good uh, uh, resource for this, especially for things like memory and that. Um, hard drives, I don't know. Uh, people may argue for and against that. Um, I'll leave that for you to decide. But things like memory, um, you'll get way cheaper um, buying memory off eBay um, than brand new. Obviously, there's a risk that some of it might blow up in, the, in a month, but that's kind of the risk you got to take. All right, so this goes on to the, the first kind of points I was making earlier. Um, once you've bought the server, turning it into a virtualized server it is my uh, recommendation. That It just gives so much uh, possibility. So you, you kind of, I, I don't know if there's more than those two options there, but these are two, certainly two good options to start off with. Um, I use ESX, ESXR. It's a VMware product, it's free. Um, there are some limitations, but for home network, you, you're not gonna, you probably won't ever hit those limitations. Um, it's something to do about the number of CPUs or something that you can have on a VM or something like that. Um, and then there's Proxmark, uh, which is open source. I think that also had some limitations, but again, um, just check it out. So this allows you to spin up VMs, uh, snapshot them um, and do all sorts of things um, with them and I, I just really love it so if I, I want to test out a new service I can just spin up a VM um, in a matter of just a few uh, minutes and as you can see I think I have even more now um, there's a whole bunch of things you, you can do and on this I think I had issues with memory on it. Uh, I can't remember how much memory 
it's running at the moment. I think it's about uh, not quite 32. I can't remember. Um, I had some issues with memory. But I mean, as you can see, there's, there's a whole bunch of VMs that you can throw at it. It just means there's so much you can do, play, test with. Um, and all in all, I probably spent under than less than 500 bucks on the server. Um, so it's, it's well worth it. Um, obviously the next part of virtualization is you can go to the cloud. Um, cloud, I'd, I'd be careful with because I've seen this firsthand recently. <laughs> if you're not careful, it can be a big, huge money. Um, you can have loads of costs associated with it um uh, so just be careful um if you do choose this route um it can cost a lot of money uh and it's someone else's computer so those points that i made earlier that you kind of can do what you want well cloud probably not quite so um uh it's there are often limitations around cloud providers. Some of them are stricter than others. Uh, I know AWS were strict at some point. I think they've kind of eased off a little bit, but there's certainly boundaries if you in the cloud versus your own home network where you can essentially almost do anything that you want, as long as it's within bounds of your own network. As I said, uh, hacking laptop, uh, so this is one I actually got off eBay, um, just as a hacky laptop. Um, something that I found pretty cool. I wasn't intentionally trying to have two hard drives, but some laptops now come up with a uh, hard drive as well as a uh, uh, M2. Uh, so you essentially can have two hard drives. And for a hacking laptop, that's awesome because that means dual boots. Windows on one drive, uh, Kali or Parrot or whatever uh os you want to put on the other drive so i've got best of the both worlds and that means now i have a device that i can test both on windows as well as linux um again buying off ebay kind of similar considerations to buying a server be patient see upgradability um, you may spend more upgrading parts than just spend spending a little bit more and getting something with better specs and of course, every hacking laptop has to have stickers. So get to the cons, get more stickers. So, um, and then other things. So I've got a whole collection of things. Um, and some of the other things I've been playing with is, I uh, bought a Wi-Fi wi pineapple ages ago. It's really fun. Um, it is a bit expensive, but it is a really neat, bit of kit. Um, I've also recently been playing with Wi-Fi uh, HID injectors, like little USB bungles that you plug in, um, and then Raspberry Pi's, um, which I'll cover in a bit. So this is a Pi Zero, um, and I think all in all, with the USB uh, adapter, whatever you want to call it, um, it costs about 20 bucks. Um, the nice thing about this is you turn it into a, I want to say glorified rubber ducky. So rubber ducky as far as I know, I could be wrong. It doesn't have wireless where this has wireless. Um, there's an awesome um, toolkit called uh, Porn P1. Um, it's open source and you can do a lot of things with that. Uh, what happens is your... Uh, Pineapple then launches a, a wireless hotspot and you connect it and you can control it. So it's it's a pretty cool tool. Um, this is pretty similar. It's just probably all neatly packaged in a uh, single pack uh, case USB thing. You can get these on Amazon for again like twenty bucks. Um, there's an Android app that you can even use it with it. Again, wireless does similar things to the. Uh, Porn P1. So Raspberry Pi, these things are pretty powerful. I'm sure most of you know about them. 
Um, these are cool just to play around with. Um, Tesla's implant devices. Um, I have tried to do it as an implant device. Um, my worry is uh, encrypting the disk. Oh, I spent ages trying to encrypt the disk. Maybe I think they maybe hopefully fixed some of the issues now, but it was really, really problematic to encrypt the disk. Um, but it gives you a whole bunch of opportunities. I mean, you could even technically just run Kali off it um, if you want a simple box just to run Kali um, or any other Linux OS or whatever. It's just more tools just to play around and test things with. So as I mentioned, Wi-Fi Pineapple, amazing pet visa kit. I haven't actually tested it yet with these antennas. So I've, my knowledge of antennas, antennas is not great, but the silver one is a more directional antenna. The other one is quite long. Um, I think it's over here. Um, so the idea behind these is to try to give it a bit more range um, as well as being able to pick up better uh, signals. So pineapple can both detect uh, existing Wi-Fi networks. It can also detect devices and what wireless networks they're trying to ping for and then replicate those as well as obviously broadcast uh, APs. Um, and there's a whole host of things that you can do with it. There's a whole bunch of plugins from Rick Rowling someone to DNS uh, poisoning to man in the middle. Um, I like setting up with uh, firewall to redirect through burp so you can do man in the middle uh, around things like HTTP sites. This is going on to something I didn't buy this purposely for this. Um, it just I have a gaming rig. Um, I bought cards, upgraded them, so I had some spare cards lying about. So I thought, well, why not just try to turn it, some of it into a um, password cracking rig. Uh, I wouldn't say it's amazing because, I mean, the cards are getting a bit old now, but hey, it's just part of that tinkering, playing around with things. So uh, I forgot the exact term. I think they're PCR bridges, extensions. You can buy it off eBay um, and it allows you just to connect multiple PCR card, PCI Express cards and then just form a password cracking rig. Um, I wouldn't turn it into a crypto miner rig at the moment because the cryptocurrency is not looking good at the moment. Um, I tried it on Windows uh, using Hash, Hashcat. Um, didn't really work that well, so I turned my system into dual boot uh, using Hashcat in uh, Ubuntu. It works pretty well. Um, you might just need to install the NVIDIA drivers And so some of the other things you might want to play around with, um, this is small software. So Workstation, Worksta VMware Workstation is amazing. If you have uh, ESXR, um, it ties together. So your VMs and ESXR, you can spin and uh, start up and shut down and all that in Workstation itself, as well as connect to the VM um, itself via Workstation. I think you can even create some uh, new workstations via, or v sorry, new VMs via the VMware workstation. Um, there are free alternatives. So Workstation Player is a free version of Workstation. Um, it doesn't have all those fancy bells and whistles, but it'll allow you to create VMs and, and run VMs. And then there's also VirtualBox, um, similar to VMware Workstation Player. Uh, Burp Suite Pro um, for man in the middle, uh, kind of web app testing stuff. Um, again, uh, it is a bit, or it does cost money. Um, so it's up to you if you can pay for that. Some people do uh, bug bounties and that's how they pay for it. Um, but there are free alternatives. So Burp Suite itself, there is a free version of it. It doesn't have some of the things like ability to save a project or search through things as well as the pro version. Um, as well as the scanning abilities. But overall, it, it for most people, will be just fine. Um, OWASP Zap kind of has most of the stuff Pro has. Um, it's a OWASP project, so it's free. Um, 
most people still use burp it to me it just seems better polished i just prefer it but it's also going to be a personal preference and um, some people might even prefer that um so the scanners out there so vulnerability scanners there's a few out there that you can try um open vas i got told open vas is no longer open vas it's gvm and the scanner itself is open vas so green bone vulnerability management system that's like the ui portion and open vas is a scanner but i think people still refer to it as open vas um, that's free uh, don't do what i did and download the appliance the appliance well, the virtual appliance i think you have to pay for oh no wait the virtual appliance you don't have to pay for but you can't change the tls certificates um you have to pay for for that um whereas if you stand up a uh, uh, source code um you can change all of that um it obviously takes a bit of work there are uh forums out there or online the blogs and posts that take you through that process it did take me a while to set it up so just be prepared um nessus essentials pretty i'm pretty impressed with um so this is the free version of nessus it allows you i think 15 ips that you can scan for um you can let ips expire but they expire of like 90 days so it's good for a little home network where you just want to test things out um and then qualis community edition again i think 15 rps they also allow external scanning, I think three RPs. Um, so with that, you install an agent in your network and you can scan your internal network. Um, Nessus Essentials is, uh, I think an ISO that you install, I can't remember. Um, sorry, it was a while since I did it, but they've got all the instructions on how to do it. Um, Spiderfoot is pretty cool. It's an enumeration tool. So there is a SaaS based solution, which you can pay for, um, but they've also open sourced it. So you can just download it and install it on your own system and try to use that to enumerate. So it's kind of a open source intelligence tool and it'll just go off and enumerate a whole bunch of things. There's so many um, open source intelligence feeds that it ties into. So things like Shodan, um, Census, uh, certificate transparency logs the works um so have a have a check out and then cali um, i prefer cali some people might prefer parrot some people prefer even building their own system like starting off with ubuntu and building it up but yeah again the, all those os's are free and the other thing is uh resources so this is something that um i think is really important um shout out get get help from other people if you get stuck somewhere or want to find something out uh google man, number one go-to thing uh well though i use DuckDuckGo. um twitter tweet get people to um respond um many hats club is a collection of uh, security folk um a group um so again uh can ask in there there's always people willing to help out that's a good way to to try um, reach out for help if you ever get stuck and can't find what you're looking for as well as maybe uh, work with someone or team up with someone to research something that you're looking into or want to look into um, other resources uh, books so sparkflow writes really awesome books uh, i really enjoy them i've learned a lot from them so he writes hack like a uh, and there's different ones like Hack Like a Ghost and Hack Like a Rockstar and that. Um, they, they're really um, informative. So I highly recommend looking, uh, checking them out. Uh, blog posts. So uh, I write some, not saying you have to follow mine, but there's a, there's a whole bunch of blogs out there. Um, check those out. Um, other things that you could look for are proof of concepts and bug bounties and CVEs. So if you're trying to find out like, hey, how do I do a cross-site scripting or do a more elegant cross-site cross scripting, maybe look at some cross-site scripting vulnerabilities and see how other people have done it in their proof of concepts. It just gives you some ideas. Um, you might even hit a problem and just look, trying to exploit something and you might then see someone else do it a certain way. 
and then you can try it out. Um, obviously, exploiting things, just doing it for security research, doing it for the good thing, not bad things. And it kind of comes to this. Um, it's hacking. Media always gives us a bad name, but it, it, it's, it's security research, plain things. Um, so as I said at the beginning, one of the, the best things about having your own lab is it's your own home lab. So I had network uh, baby monitor cameras. I didn't feel bad. I didn't have to worry about throwing a scanner and having at those cameras because it's, it's, it's my device. It's on my network. Um, so it's, it's pretty f fair game. Um, just not always going to be the case. There may, there may be, um, clauses and contracts or something like that. Um, and if you do have those, just be careful about that. But over generally it, it you, you would be able to throw like vulnerability scanners and stuff like that. Just make sure that it's in your lab. If you need to go out of your lab, get permission first. Um, don't scan something, someone else's stuff without getting that permission first. So for example, if you have an internet connected device and you want to test the API, get the permission of the vendor first before you do that. Um, also, security research is great, but also uh, it's, it's a good way to give back. Uh, uh, knowledge sharing um, so share some of the things that you researching or finding on Twitter um, people might even chime in and have other suggestions or or you might even help other people out same as blogging about it um, I've learned a huge amount from doing this stuff uh, I've found some things and I've at the end of the day I've had a lot of fun I mean that's what it's really about um, you, you do this to have fun uh, also important is your environment. Um, so sometimes you must spend time doing this. So get a desk with space so it's less cluttered. Um, get a decent chair. Monitors, get decent monitors. Um, if you get, if you don't uh, have decent monitors and you strain your eyes all the time, you're going to get yourself very tired and you probably do damage to your eyesight. And then um, get a decent mouse and keyboard. Um, I've got mechanical ones that I like to use just to annoy uh, AppSec bloke. Um, but yeah, I mean, get a keyboard that suits you and then lights. Lights just add a bit of atmosphere. Um, obviously it's your own choice. Um, I like them and they're, they're not that expensive. You can buy them off Amazon. And then finally, you have to wear a hoodie if, if you want to do all of this. And you know, like all good hackers, hoodies are black. Yeah, uh, they're comfy for long sessions and in a bad elite status, a mask is optional. No, of course that's out of rubbish. Uh, <laughs> you don't need a hoodie. Uh, that's, that's, yeah, rubbish. Um, cool, yeah, and there's questions. Um, anyone on the chat or anyone got anything that they want to ask or comment on or add? If not, I think we are done. Hey, I would have done 